Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest This Is The Music Meets podcast. For episode 76, I'm delighted to be joined by the Rosa Docs, who have had quite an incredible summer. As well as finding out exactly what they have been up to, we're going to look back on previous releases and find out what the band's plans are for the rest of the year, musical influences and inspirations. So the Rosa Docs, welcome along to the This Is The Music Meets podcast. Thank you so much for coming on. How are you all doing today? Yeah, we're good, mate. I think uh, we're all tired from the weekend. We just got back from Why Not, so I think we're a bit worse for wear. But... <laughs> it's Wednesday. It's a lot oh, yeah. we <laughs> Brilliant. Well, if you can't party hard at a festival, then when can you, eh? Exactly, exactly. I think we've only just pulled Will out at field. Don't look at the bottom of my shoe. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, obviously, as you just mentioned there, why not a festival? Obviously, we're let's get straight into it. Um, obviously, festival season 2023 um, has been really impressive for you guys. Um, so, can you let the listeners know, sort of, kind of like what uh, you know, yeah, what festivals you have been playing at at the moment? Yeah, so uh, we started the season with the uh, Mozfest, which was on Don Valley Bowl in Sheffield. You missed them already. Uh, oh, I missed them already. Stopped and Stopped and Oh, yeah, sorry, Stopped and Calling. <laughs> I forgot about that one. I can't, I can't remember much of that one. So, <laughs> um, so, so we, start, we started with that one. Um, but it's, it's kind of, for us, this this season's been absolutely crazy. Because, really cool. like, we've been on the fringe stages, you know, for a couple of years. And this year, sort of, we've got on all the main ones. We're yeah. in the main arenas, not the main stages, but, well, some main stages, but, yeah, yeah. you know, in the main arenas of yeah. the festivals. And it's been a privilege to play along some of us' favourite bands and some of the biggest bands in the world. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Obviously, it's been, it has obviously been really, you know, pretty mad, I guess, really. Um, but kind of like then, because I think, you've, as you say, you've played, sort of, I think it's about three or four festivals I think you've had, you've had so far. Um, is there kind of like maybe one of those ones that has really stood out for you? You know, was there kind of, and I'm sort of really like looking, thinking, was there like a moment like maybe during the set when you thought you looked at each other and thought, wow, we've we've nailed our set here or maybe blown away by like the number of people that, that actually came down to, to like watch you? Yeah, I think, why not? Why not? Yeah, L- last Saturday were just ridiculous. Um, we, we set everything up and obviously between kind of slots, 10 empty. So when you're setting yeah. your gear up, like 10 people stood in there, you think, oh, you don't know what to expect. So we disappeared at a, at a beer line before going back on. And Dean, who was um, like announcing each band as it came on, said, oh, I'm going to announce you now. I went, cheer for the Rosa Docks. And this massive cheer went up. We looked at each other and like, where have all the people come from? <laughs> bed? After we did said, Dean said, there were about 4,000 people in 10. Yeah. It yeah. was like, we, we, we just. just peeked his head round the side of the curtain when we heard the cheer that every single one of us just went white. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brilliant. It was fantastic. I mean, Brilliant. The reception that we got there was incredible. Yeah. And um, we did we did tram lines the, uh, the week before and that was a massive, massive crowd. But I mean, that that was, <laughs> well, compared, to, there, compared to why not, that was even minuscule, weren't yeah, it? And yeah, there was yeah. a lot there. So I thought, it, thought it'd be hard to top with tram lines, to be fair, because mm-hmm. I thought that was a massive crowd. And then to go to Why Not after that, and it's like, what, it's so like twice, yeah. twice as big, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah just, it is. It, it blows your mind. Yeah. Oh, great stuff. Well, it certainly sounds like, um, you know, that everything's obviously going in, in the right direction and in terms of, you know, hopefully there's some familiar faces in, in the crowd coming, but obviously as well, it sounds like you might have... um. Know, a few sort of new faces um as well which is obviously as i say fantastic um to hear but obviously staying with uh festival season obviously you've got i think you've got about five or six more um appearances lined up um over like the next five weeks so for those people that maybe have seen that you're on the bill what what can they expect um from your set well we to be fair we're, we're the kind of band uh, that we, we just love to keep changing things up so what we've been doing is we've got a massive massive headline at the end of the year uh, in november at the city hall and basically we use the festivals um to sort of test new things but yeah. also you know it's a strongest set but also it gives us that chance to interact a little bit more with the crowd because it's not just people that are your fans that are coming to see you know 
the hits, if you like, yeah, <laughs> or yeah. like the, the song that they like of yours, not his, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you can sort of play about with things. And, you know, I like to get in the crowd. I mean, somebody, what did somebody call me the, the other day? Keelan, the conductor. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, you know what I mean it gives us a chance to sort of interact and play with these new ideas so it's kind of, it's still even after like what six years we're still honing the craft if you like yeah I think good yeah. thing about this festival season boys because we've had bad many the set we're doing now is tight enough that we can actually enjoy playing it rather than like we're not like well speak for ourselves like you yeah. don't need to think about what you're yeah. playing mm-hmm. so you can like enjoy playing it and kind of interact even as like drummer and a bar. I can like get eye contact and kind of get my interaction with crowd yeah, because yeah, you, yeah. it's that locked in while we're playing. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I, and I guess as well, does that also help with like you know watching like what the crowd are doing as well that you sort of like know the set almost like you know like the back of your hand type of thing. Yeah, it just it allows you to make it more of a show because yeah. obviously when when you first start, you're so focused on not messing up on your instrument and not singing out of key, and you know <laughs> it just it allows you to feed off of each other, yeah. feed off of the crowd. You know, we're we're the sort of band as well, and somebody who else, who else uh, sorry, somebody else that I think does this really well is the lottery winners. Yeah. They're really really interactive. They talk to the crowd. You know, they've got that really good sort of relationship with yeah. the fans. Mm. And that's something that we, we like to do. We like to talk to people on a level and, you know, get feedback because that's the only way that you can improve. And I think this time as well, we're actually enjoying playing it as much as people hopefully are enjoying yeah. watching it. Yeah. It's yeah. like mutual. It's good for us as well. As well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Great stuff. And I think, you know, the, you, you know, I guess there's no point doing it if it's becoming a chore. So obviously it's great to hear as well that you guys are obviously having the time of your lives, I guess, by the sounds of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, on the stage. And, yeah, and, and I, think, I think for the first time in like sort of, ever, yeah. uh, well, not not first time ever because we've, we've always loved it, but I mean like sort of the, the way it's going now is just unbelievable. And like like I just said, is the people we're meeting, like yeah. the people that we've always wanted to meet and stuff, and it's it's sort of it, it instills that motivation that you have for it's it. Like it's like it's became the reason why you get into a band. Yeah, but yeah. like this summer's became that like <laughs> ideal for us. Like with first time, we feel like oh, this is. This is why we're doing it. This is exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. gig after gig. Even if like somewhere in Isle of Wight, we went down in a tiny, tiny stage, obviously, because we're on smaller stage, but we're still playing Isle of Wight. Yeah. yeah. But you you still love it. You still enjoy it. It's yeah. still I, I just enjoyed the ferry, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he felt good to you. I told him to bring his armbands. <laughs> Yeah, that Solent, to be fair, can be uh, can be a bit choppy at times, believe you me. Um, <laughs> and obviously in between um, like the festival slots, you've obviously been, I'm, I'm blown my mind when I'm going through um, researching this, how you've managed to find the time obviously to fit in all the festival appearances that you've done. Um, but also well, you've obviously been out um, doing your own sort of like headline tour um, as well, kind of like almost in between, um, in in some cases on you know in between the festival dates, um, obviously first sort of major headline tour, like uh, yeah, headline tour sold out as well, which is obviously great to see. Um, I'm I'm guessing really then probably like a kind of like a different experience to the festivals. Um, so yeah, how how was the headline tour for you, um, and 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 how did it differ to those festival dates? Yeah, no, the uh, the headline tour was, um, again, great. Well, great for me because it was my first one like, with, with these guys. Yeah. Because like, I only joined in uh, January. So um, that, that, was, that was a crazy experience as well because playing in other bands to basically the barman and about three <laughs> other people <laughs> playing out to a sold out headline tour yeah. with these guys was amazing. And then, to, and then obviously to go into the festivals after that, which... Again, uns- to play in an unsigned band and get festival slots on the stages we've got is is crazy as well, and the, all the reception for that. So yeah, we, we were we were saying the other day we can't believe sort of the momentum that we've built up within three to six months. Yeah, because it, like so we we we've got a plan, and you set these things out, you know, a year an in ideal, advance, yeah. an ideal of what you want to achieve. You know, I, I think part of it is you don't really expect to achieve it. You got yeah. to strive for it. You don't expect it, but we we were saying as of like 
two months ago, we'd achieved everything we'd set out in an 18-month plan yeah. and so, so much more that we oh, can't massively. believe. If you'd have told us in October of last year that we'd have had a weekend where we played a sold-out gig in Manchester, sold-out in Birmingham, yeah. and then played Isle of Wight next day, yeah. we would have, I'd have not believed you. No. <laughs> that happened. And, I, I didn't believe it on day. Of course, I'm still recovering. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a bunk bed in the van, and I swear to God, I was passed out the entire way down to well, Ottawa. I was having a fight over that bunk bed. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just scrapping Aerosmith in back. I don't know the things that people do to pretend they're asleep to get out of driving, eh? <laughs> <laughs> It's even more worrying if they are driving. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, definitely. Um, so let's uh, let's rewind um, back to the very very beginning. Um, can you guys can kind of like remember like your first ever like you know musical memory? Um, you know that sort of maybe got you into music. Was it like a certain song or or maybe a band that you that you can remember like hearing for the first time? I, th- I think my first recollection of it is. I'm probably about six, seven years old, and it was uh, Tony Christie. Is this the way to Amarillo? <laughs> and it, 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 it were on the back of uh, it were like now three or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can just remember it was track thirty because I used to just get in the car and like skip it straight. No, that was yeah. top of the chart for about ten weeks as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I remember. I just keep saying it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? To be fair, I was quite lucky growing up because like, my dad and our Darren had always been listening to like, First Art in Monkey's album, Melbourne, Little Man Tate, all of that. So kind of a yeah. Sheffield music for in me from being quite wow. quite young. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, my, my dad uh, plays guitar and stuff, so I was always around music growing up. So maybe since like four years, you see like a guitar in the corner of the room or whatever. So yeah, that's about it for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably Green Day for me and like Link Biscuit, Lincoln Park, all that scene. Yeah. Yeah. It was email. <laughs> Still got stretches to prove it. <laughs> and kind of like sticking as well with um with like musical first, can you remember like what was the first gig uh, that you ever went to? Uh I Green think Day, Green Day. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a good, good first gig, gig. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great. My, my word. Mine was Jake Bug at Doncaster Dome in 2013, I think. Oh, what, that was your first year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's quite late. For... Yeah. I know, yeah. Uh, Play a blue one there. Mine was uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, the... oh yeah. Was... Everybody's got like, the yeah. top band in the world. <laughs> Mine, McFly. Oh, um, that's right. Mean. Like 2005. Yeah. I thought you were going to say that like, boys on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you see boys on. That was a Westlife. Oh, it's Westlife. It's Westlife in here. Oh, yeah, Westlife. You're welcome yeah. for Westlife. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant and and kind of like as well then listening there to to the different um you know bands and artists that you sort of saw for the first time um have they kind of like continued to be like a, an inspiration or or an influence on on you obviously eventually getting into a band and and do they still influence you like today or have you moved away from those uh mcfly days <laughs> to be fair, we went to tramlines, didn't we, to watch them? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Other, other week, nice. I think. Um, I think. I think if personally, if I've ever liked a song or a band, yeah, even if I don't like the newer stuff or whatever, I, I don't dislike it because it's still nostalgic. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a big nostalgia feel yeah. to, to anything. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> to, to anything you grew up listening to, they always holds a place in your heart, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like. Like the American Idiot album, for example, is a massive. I don't necessarily listen to Green Day now, but that album is amazing. Yeah, right? yeah. That's yeah. Like, yeah. Life, life changing for an eleven-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. I think I think there's so much nostalgia to what you listen to when you were a child. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how old you get; it's still yeah, there's that there, feeling yeah. attached yeah. to it, and when you listen yeah. to it, mm-hmm. even if like sort of, especially because we're doing music, I think. As you play and you get better at your instrument, you know, you progress, you open up new areas you can for yourself. It more, can't you? And so you do yeah. take on different influences from other people and new 
sort of we had some that conversation didn't we when we saw the flyer tram lines of the week like obviously when you are old would I've been I think we were, we were 10 when we went to watch them yeah so like it's amazing seeing a show like our 10 but as you get older people kind of like knock them and say that it's not real music or whatever but actually seeing them at tram lines of the day yeah. they're unreal musicians yeah. like within yeah. their own right just because it's like a pop band yeah. Don't they're, they're, they're still very much a live band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. like a click and go situation. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, just in front of my He needs like a teacher. We've got your back. We've got your back. <laughs> He's got a help line across the chair. I'm not trying to turn on. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so. Um, how then, how did the Rosa Ducks form then? Because obviously you released your first single uh, in 2017. So how long had you been together at that point? Um, so, we, yes, yeah, so we started in 2017. We've been together about three months, something like that. And we just dank gig. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> it, was, it, was, I, I would, I, it was more me than the rest of the lads because the other lads had done other bits before. But, you know, like how nerve-wracking it is to first go and stand in front of an audience, play these songs that you've been bashing out in a practice room for the last three months. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we did that and we released uh, a track called Number 54 yeah. in um, 2017. and it was June or July. Yeah, June or July. And it just, to be fair, we had a really good start because that mm. song just seemed to click with people. Yeah. No, definitely. And, so, and obviously, oh, sorry, now go on. No, no, sorry, sorry, you kind of. Oh no, I was just gonna ca- just sort of go on on from that because obviously since since then, uh, number fifty four, obviously you've released uh, eleven other songs uh, since then, um, and you've had over uh, over se- no, nearly seven hundred and twenty thousand um, streams on Spotify. So kind of like when you hear those numbers and you sort of like go back to the very beginning, did you ever imagine that you would achieve, you know, those sort of like listening figures? Um, you know, in, in, in such a short space of time? No. And I tell you what, my GCSE music teacher won't believe it either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, think, I think because we've not had sort of the backing that some people do get pretty sharpish, I yeah. think those numbers, just to say they are solely word of mouth, yeah. is astonishing. And yeah. I think, like, we all looked at each other then when you said, like, there's 11 songs on Spotify. We kind of see this band in, like, phases as well. But, like, obviously, before I joined, but then we released, like, what were we, Oak Tree and Concrete, yeah. which they kind of are together like in our yeah. heads. And then we recorded Two Wrongs Make a Right EP. Mm. So all of them are together. And then we did, like, Towards Sun and um, I Your Door. It's like you see it in sections rather than as one big. Yeah. It's yeah. like when oh, you right. send numbers out, 11 songs in total, like, it's like, oh. That's amazing. It takes yeah. back a bit, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, definitely. Well, fingers crossed, um, obviously, that you keep those figures going. Um, and obviously, um, on the latest single uh, that came out uh, in May, wasn't it? About two, three months ago now, um, yeah. obviously, At Your Door. Um, maybe for those that, that haven't heard haven't heard that particular song or, or anything of the Rosa Docs yet, actually, let's, let's, sorry, let's take that back. Let's concentrate on that single first. So, At Your Door. Um, can you maybe, as I say, for those that haven't heard it, can you maybe just give us a little bit of an insight uh, into the track? So, uh, essentially, it's about being in the doghouse with the missus. <laughs> that's that's relatable for everybody. <laughs> it is, yeah. exactly. You see, we're trying to be relatable. That's first and foremost on the mind. Um, but so, it, it was just written sort of about, you know, he's been out on a night out, he's got in trouble, he's come back right late, but she's decided to lock the door. And so, he's not allowed to be in. So, at like three o'clock in the morning, he stood at your door knocking on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it is. It's um, it's it is an it's an absolute belter of a track, and um, I've yeah had it on repeat um since since it come out. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's hope you've got some more uh new music uh in the pipeline uh very soon. Um, but I just sort of want to fast forward um a little bit. Um, you you did mention it um right at the top of the show. Um, obviously in November you've got a, a big hometown show um at the Sheffield City Ballroom. Um, and I believe that there are still a limited uh, number of tickets left. So I'll be putting the ticket link in the episode bio. So don't delay. Uh, once you've listened to this podcast, go and get your ticket. Um, but obviously biggest gig so far. What's the mood like? Nervous? Excited? Has it has it sunk in yet that you're going to be playing? 
uh, you know, the biggest gig, I guess, of your lives, I guess, at, at this point in, in terms yeah. of size? I, 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 yeah, it's, it's sinking in. I think for first time, everything we've ever done, it's always felt like we were reaching. And don't get me wrong, like this show, obviously, capacity-wise, it still feels like, but I feel like we're ready for it as well. Like, after this summer, what we've had, and like all the different places we'll have played, like some main stages, obviously, Isle of Wight, it feels like we're in the right place to do this show and actually make it what we want it to be. Yeah. I was just going to say, I feel like we've had like a real good head start with this. Yeah. Like all tickets seem to be flying and we're just on his way. Yeah. I think as well, because we keep we keep saying we don't just want to be kind of a band, but even like this festival um, slots, we don't just go out, play the songs and disappear like Keelan gets in the crowd on one song on 54, <laughs> Wiki Car, like um, Penny Float Footballs. We, we wanted to be more of a show, like, right, obviously, all them bands we named as first people went to see, yeah. McFly, Green Day, Red yeah. Hot Chili Peppers, wanted exactly. to be a show rather than just a, a gig. And yeah. we've got a really good head start to actually making that happen for this. Yeah, yeah so well. so we've put quite a few months into sort of the planning of, basically, we start with a set list and then we just see what sort of ideas for each song could we do just to sort of, you know, weave it into some kind of concept rather than just playing, you know, 16 songs back yeah. to back and then walking away. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, obviously, it's obviously going to be a massive night for you and, uh, you know, good good luck with it, really, because um, I can hear how excited you are about it. Um, and, you know, it obviously sounds like, with, not just with this gig, but I think with, with everything that you've done, clearly there's um, a lot of thought uh, that's going into it. And, and, and personally, it's great to hear um, and great to see that you're not, you know, that you have you are trying to go that little bit extra mile and, and put on a show rather than as you were just saying, just that just it to be like another gig, if that if that makes some if that makes yeah, some think, kind of sense. In, in most elements, we try and think outside of the box. Yeah, I, I think the, the one thing that we've always set the standard for ourselves with is to just try and be different because there's so many people doing the same thing. Yeah, and obviously there's some cracking cracking bands out there that never get noticed. Yeah. It's such a shame. Yeah. We just we just want to catch people's eyes by being that band that did this. Well, that's why we chose um, CTR Ballroom as well, isn't it? Because yeah. I think, roughly, I think we're the first unsigned band to play it in, like, seven years. So rather than just wow. doing, like, what we about doing, like, O2 Academy second room yeah. in Sheffield, which is a, a brilliant room, one we've done before, but we wanted, we just want to do everything slightly off-kilter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it yeah, more memorable yeah. for us as well. It's sort of like a formula. Like sort of for these cities, and if you know the city that you're gigging in, there's like almost like a stepping stone way of getting to yeah. the size capacity that you want to get to. So for us, it'd be now it'd be like Sydney and Matilda, then it'd be Lednell Small Room, then it'd be O two two. Then do you know what I mean? So it's these yeah, yeah, to work sure. up. And we we did that ladder up till sort of lockdown. Yeah. And when COVID came, it absolutely scuppered everyone's plans. Obviously, yeah. so you sort of start again. So from that point onwards, we sort of made a plan to say, you know, we're not going to just go that formulate route again. We're going to just change it up and just try and be that band that's, you know, yeah. doing it a different way. And even down to like, obviously, we're absolutely buzzing for City Hall gig, but we've already got ideas in his head about what like is Sheffield gig after that had looked like. And again, we're wanting to keep it on this kind of different angle rather than going yeah. kind of down the straight yeah. road, road that everybody else yeah. does. Yeah, sure. Well, we, it's certainly we just obviously mentioned in there with COVID. Obviously, it's, it it clearly trying to go down a different route to to everybody else is it's clearly working for you. And and as I say, like you know, good luck with it because it's it, it's great to see. Um, but sort of just talking about um sort of big you know big opportunities to play big uh big venues. Um, obviously in the in the sort of the last twelve months, you've had a couple of links. Um, with some sporting uh, teams. Obviously, you played at the Etihad Stadium, which is obviously, for those that don't know, is the home of Manchester City Football Club, um, playing there before a uh, before Premier League game. Um, and also, as well, the music video for um, Towards the Sun. Um, obviously, you played at the uh, Utilia um, Arena in Sheffield, obviously the home of the um, the Sheffield Steelers. I mean, the video for that looked, uh, looked like a whole great load of fun for you guys. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there were some accidents on the ice, but it was good, yeah. <laughs> it's mad to think, actually, it just popped into my head there. We're an unsigned band. We've played three football stadiums and one arena. Yeah, yeah that's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have, actually. That's, that's crazy. Mad. I've not even written that down. 
<laughs> yeah, but, uh, it's, it's, it's been a real privilege for us to sort of be involved with the Sheffield Steelers. Yeah. And I mean, obviously everybody else, but the Steelers we've really developed a close relationship with. Um, they have helped us magnificently, haven't yeah. they? They've, they've really offered us a hand with a lot of things. Um, and in fact, uh, they have asked us back and we're on the 15th of September... Yeah. We're doing the kit launch at Sheffield Arena. Oh, fantastic. So we're, we're going to be playing and they set up this amazing stage right in the middle of the arena. You know, it fills up with all Steelers fans. It's like a sea of orange kits. Yeah. Um, they dress us up in their kits and we just come and play a full set on, you know, our big screens and everything. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's such a good event. I'd, anybody that's from around the area, even if you're not a fan of ice hockey, I'd encourage them to come to the night because it's brilliant. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, there you go then. Uh, so you said that was the, uh, the 15th of September. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, get yeah. If you're in if you're in the area, then uh, yeah, get get yourselves down because I'm sure that'll be, you know, two two fantastic things, you know, to to go and see a uh, bit of ice hockey and a, and effectively a well a bit of a free gig, um, as well in 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 yeah, as well. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and obviously just continuing with the the sports theme. Obviously, you've also played uh, Keelan. I know um, you are a Chesterfield fan. I'm not sure about the rest of you lads who who you all support. Um, but just sort of talking about uh, Chesterfield um, hopes for this season. Are you going to hopefully get out of the conference this year and back into the back into the football well, I league? Hope, I were hoping we were last season, but it came right down to the wire, and then. I nearly threw my pint all over my girlfriend accidentally because when 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 they missed that last penalty, I was shaking and it was going everywhere. My pint was just spilling everywhere. Honestly, it was nerve wracking in the world. But I don't think either of us had the best footballing seasons. So no, so well. Callum's a Barnsley fan and it came right, right okay. down to Wembley with him as well. Oh, so we both man. had an absolute stinker. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think in terms of Chesterfield, I think. Um, They've got they've got a lot of new back in. There's a lot of support from the fans. I think you know there's a lot of anticipation for the team that we've got this season. Obviously, we've got manager again, who Paul Cook is really behind the team again. So, I think I think we're all very very excited for the new season. So, which starts this Saturday actually. So yeah, yeah. Obviously, you're at home, aren't you, to uh, to Dawkins? So uh, yeah, good good luck with that. And 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 Barnsley, what's the what's the hopes for this for them this season? Well, it... The reaction there, that was it. <laughs> we had a new bridge built, so I'm telling you, we're on for up. Yeah, but yeah, pr- promotion's got to be the got to be the hope, and and my bridge being opened in time, so we don't need to walk all the way around town to get to, to get stadium would be nice. <laughs> my sources are telling me though it's Martin and Fosabdi, so that's one less pint I'll be able to have before. Yeah. 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 That's Barry from Galloping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Well, I'll, I'll keep my eyes out for when this bridge is built and, uh, yeah, get this, remember like this now. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So, um, here at This Is The Music, uh, we obviously like to try and shine a light um, on unsigned bands and, and artists, um, you know, like the Rosa Docs that are obviously trying to find their way um, on the sort of new music, unsigned um, indie scene. So kind of like over the sort of like last twelve months or so, what what bands and, and artists on that scene have, have, have caught you you guys eye? Um, to be fair, we we were saying this the other day. There's so much talent out there at the moment, and I mean the guitar music is well and truly back with a vengeance. So um, I mean for me, obviously we've we've gigged with them a lot. We're really good friends with them. I always enjoy the claws. I think the yeah. claws are a fantastic yeah, band. Brilliant. Um, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I mean, new discoveries. Slate. Yes, Slate. Slate, Slate is um, fantastic. Yeah, so, them right. lads are from yeah. Leeds. Yeah. Uh, we met them first at Why Not, dead on like a year today. Yeah, really, yeah. Oh, yes. You know, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we, we've we've done a few gigs with them since. Yeah, and, you know, know really, really good pals with them now. So, they're, they're a band to watch, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Brilliant. Well, two, two fantastic bands there that... Um, I'm yeah personally uh, fans of as well. So um yeah obviously yeah good good luck to them as well, both of them as well with what they do. Something else to say as well is um, I really enjoyed Big Image. You know yeah. um yeah. uh, what did they used to be called? Ivory Wave. Ivory Wave they used to be called yeah. and now they're called Big Image. Yeah, yeah we we know them quite well and they're, they're a fantastic band, very like different to what's out there as yeah, well. Really nice and lads. Really nice lads, really yeah, friendly, really hard working. 
you know, good, good lads, good lads. I just wanted to mention them as well, you know. <laughs> Brilliant. Why not? So we're going to throw um, some some quick fire questions um, at you now. Um, so first one, uh, what's the one item uh, that you can't live without? Probably PlayStation. <laughs> 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 Um, bro, like, probably coffee in the morning. I thought you were going to say a hair brush. I don't know why. <laughs> well, I was like, I brush my hair. <laughs> Conditioner. Yeah. 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 Like, oh my God. How are you going to survive? You're going to have to chop it off. If you don't wash it for long enough, it starts to. Yeah, uh, and dreadlocks. Right. <laughs> you have to start singing reggae. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it starts to naturally clean itself, doesn't it? Yeah, if you just if you start washing all that. I'm, 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 I'm learning oh, new things. <laughs> Me oven, I like cooking. Your oven, your oven, love cooking. Yeah, but what's wrong with that? Just carry, carry it by, yeah. Why is it wrong with gas? Left him there. This guy is definitely doing it. Yeah. Well, I, I was going to keep it musical. I was going to say my guitar. I was going to say my drums. Oh, I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, water if you're out of here. Oxygen to be a fighting Brilliant. Some great answers in there. I really, really love them ones. So, um, which band member um, is always late, be it that for a rehearsal, turning up for a gig, podcasts? Anything? Who, who is that? It's it's you. You. No, it is it's you. It's you. No, because, <laughs> because we always know I'm going to be late because of work. Whereas yeah. every time you're on M18, there's a 17 oh, car pile up in front of you. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, it's one of it's one of them where yeah, yeah, I'm just five minutes away. I look at sat and it says 42 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is five, I'll be there is five. You actually nudged me on the way flying up the other day. He's like, oh yeah, we're five minutes away, aren't we? That's a good fifteen on this side. Somebody rang me. You're me. Yeah. So and I, I knew you were lying. Helen <laughs> rang me and he was like, "Are you close, mate? Where are you?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, five minutes." Looked at Will and went, "Give him an elbow." <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, fair enough. My organisation could be better. <laughs> Brilliant, great stuff. So um another one for you then. Um if you could go on any TV show um as a contestant, what show would you choose and why? Probably Takeshi's Castle. Oh, <laughs> yes, mate, I'm having that. Yeah. <laughs> Coming back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've got two answers because any <laughs> any program I want to be on Sunday brunch. <laughs> yeah, I want to be on Sunday brunch. I'd love to go and eat the food. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. brunch. But if it's, if it's competition, what was that program where you used to have to go into the cave and get them gems, gemstones? Oh, oh, jungle Run. Jungle Run. Jungle Run. Yeah. I've, yeah, not, so, I've not seen this. Have you not? Oh, that was like a CBBC. Yeah, CBBC. Yeah. You have to run in, get do these puzzles, and then you got like... Yeah. You got that monkey throwing stuff at you. Yeah, these monkeys used to well, people in suits used to throw... <laughs> throw <laughs> these things at you. They've not got trained eight. Um, <laughs> we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are, we play lead guitar. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you used to have to like... Uh, capture these gemstones yeah, and then right. get out before the door. It would be closed. like Crystal Maze. Yeah. Like my like kind of idea. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Sorry. Anyway, well... <laughs> I I think uh, Total Wipeout would be a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Launching yourself about that being Richard Allen just slagging you off. I think it's going to be the Argentina as well. Isn't it? Yeah. Is it? So, yeah, that would be a good So, you get a holiday. Yeah, yeah, holiday. Right. Oh, but Sorry, win win. Funny, yeah, we're thinking about this way too much. Anybody remember Paul Bayard? No, it's yeah. just me who remembers that. No, that just real thing? Yeah, it's real thing. They didn't get that below Barnsley. <laughs> not. Again, it was a bit like Crystal Maze with one beside. You know them big concrete forts are in the middle of, like, sea? Oh, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah I know. Yeah, yeah. I knew, I knew. It's it's possible possible on the Isle of Wight. Yeah, yeah. I knew it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, some, some, top, some top answers in there and definitely... Uh, some top answers in there and definitely um a little bit of uh nostalgia in there as well with, with that which is great to obviously always always have um so kind of like then what what are the plans then um for the rosa docs for the rest of the year because 
obviously we've, we've mentioned the big headline show um, coming up in, in November. Um, and obviously you've, you've hinted as well that you're already looking uh, at the next gig uh, in Sheffield for, for next year. Um, so yeah, what, what are we looking at for the rest of this year? So uh, obviously we've got a really busy festival season. Um, we've got odd headlines scattered around the UK. Uh, we've got some really, really big unannounced shows. Yeah. Um, that we, uh, we some we can't even talk about till yeah. after, but that are, you know with people we've, we've idolised icons icon since we were. Still, hey, one one gig that we do we keep forgetting about is the one we've got coming up in Hull. Yeah. Because he hit me again the other day. The bad gig will be the last full set we do before City Hall yeah so if people want to come and kind of get an idea what, what like City Hall might be like on the 27th of August 27th of August yeah. so it's um, August Bank Holiday weekend as well it's his first like proper gig in Hull yeah so it's I'm really the, looking uh, forward to that it's at the iconic New Adelphi Club um, right yeah which is like sort of a you know it, everybody goes there if you play all that that's the so place right to like, passage right to passage that's what I was yeah <laughs> Brilliant, great stuff. Obviously, it sounds like um you've got a quite a lot going on um in the next sort of few months and, and and weeks ahead, which is um which is brilliant to see. And I'm I'm really looking forward um to seeing what what those announcements um are going to be. Um, but unfortunately, lads, that is the end uh, of the this is the music meets uh, the Rosa Docs podcast. Um, thank you so much for coming on. I've I've had a great blast. Um, and I hope that you guys um have as well. Um, but just before I let you go, can you just let the This Is The Music listeners uh, know what uh, social media platforms that they can find you on? Yeah, so we're on absolutely everything. You can find us on Twitter or X, as it's now called. Yeah. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok. Oh, um, if it's a Snapchat, don't add it. It's not us. Um, <laughs> YouTube. Um, you can find us on Spotify, Deezer, all of them, basically. Brilliant, great stuff. We'll put those um, links in the episode bio um, as well with the uh, ticket link to the big gig uh, in Sheffield in a few months' time um, as well. Uh, lads, as I say, thank you very much for coming on um, and I really wish you continued success. It's been great uh, discovering you a couple of years ago and, and I always look forward uh, to every release that you have coming out um, and, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing uh, what what's next for you guys in store. Yeah, thank you for having us, mate. We, we really enjoyed it. It's fantastic. Thank you. All that leaves me to say is to thank everyone for listening to the latest This Is The Music Meets podcast. Please subscribe so you never miss out on any future episodes. And if you're loving the podcast, then please give us a five-star rating and written review, as it really does help the bands and artists we interview to be discovered. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again somewhere down the road.